Hey everybody, it's Aluna Michaels, Esoteric Astrologer, coming at you to talk about the events of August 2020. So, okay. The big news, well, I mean, it's going to be news for a while. I want to talk to you about each month for a little bit. Is Mars turning retrograde? Now, Mars will not turn retrograde until the middle of September, but we're in this pre-retrograde time. And mostly what's happening excuse me, is Mars is slowing down. Now, Mars loves to go fast, and Mars is in Aries, you know. So Mars is a planet of energy, action. Um, it can be decisiveness, uh, physical, physical energy, emotional energy, you know, just this kind of idea of vitality, okay. And Aries is the sign linked with Mars, so it's especially powerful when it's in its own sign. And... Um, Mars is going, it went into Aries at the end of June, and it's going to stay in Aries till the middle of January. And usually Mars will go through a sign in um, like six or eight weeks, you know, zoom, just, and Mars likes to go fast, you know. So Mars is not crazy about turning retrograde, which involves slowing down. And I don't think it minds being backwards as much as the slowing down part, because it slows down to go backwards and it slows down to go forward. So throughout Maybe starting like the middle of August, Mars starts to go slower, slower, slower. And one of the things to look at is <clears throat> as Mars slows down, it's going to first square Pluto and then it's going to square Saturn. So let's talk about that. Um, so Mars is going to square Pluto. And again, usually this would be two or three days, but it's going to be a little longer because of the slowdown. Let's say like August you know, 10 or 11 to the 17th, it's squaring Pluto. And we like to say that well, Pluto is like Mars's big brother, you know. So it's instead of just anger or uh, just a, just a uh, kind of frustration, Pluto's like a damn, more of a depth of frustration and stuff. So as Mars squares Pluto, it's just really interesting to work with your, very needed to work with meditation, deep breathing, um, watching for other people's anger. Like, it's just like, oh my gosh, why are people so, ah, you know, they can act like the smallest thing is a big deal, you know? And that can be because the thing, the small thing, the Mars, kind of the surface anger, there can be a real root to the anger and frustration, a sense of powerlessness that when Mars is squaring Pluto, it's like, I feel like I don't have any personal power, you know? And so it could be people that are afraid of financial stuff or they have, you know, issues that they were abused as children or something. And it can be like, what does that have to do with me shopping at Walgreens and the person in front of me is whatever, mad that I stepped, I don't want to say step too close to them because now it's a big deal, but, you know, whatever it might be. But it's just people's um, sense of anytime they've had... Um, power usurped or felt powerless. This just could come up more, you know, this month. And it can be a time for, for you to look at, um, because I want to say just the idea of um, Mars in Aries is about how you could use your personal power the best. And that could be your physical power in the sense of what you eat, how you exercise, getting up sleep, like Making sure, like, kind of like your body is this, this well-oiled machine kind of idea, you know? But it's also seeing when to not have to fight something. When do you just kind of hold back and say, oh, let's see what happens, and, and look for better timing of taking actions when you meet a lot of resistance, you know? Um, we'll talk about that in a little bit again. But um, So then Mars will then keep slowing down, going forward but slowing down, and it will be squaring Saturn next. And that's going to be, because um, both Saturn and Pluto are in Capricorn, so making the same mathematical angle. That would be like between the 21st and the 31st of August. So it's, you know, 10 days as opposed to a week because Mars is slowing down, you know. So um, Mars is definitely a planet of like, let's say, driving with your foot on the gas, whereas Saturn is very cautious and it's like driving with your foot on the brake. So, especially when they're making a square, it's like, go, no, go, no. So, again, we get the sense of frustration. Um, it's less, like, deep anger, like the Pluto can bring up people's deep sense of, uh, you know, pow powerlessness that makes them feel so 
of, I don't say rageful, but just a sense of over, you know, again, making the big deal out of nothing. Um, but the Saturn Mars is again, like how, how important is this? Can I let this go? Maybe letting someone else be right. If it's not such a big deal, um, you know, with a retrograde coming, you'll be proven right. I guess and if you are right, let it go. It'll come forward later. But this, and this also people could be a more tired. Um, so getting enough rest during that time, it's just for 10 days or something. I mean, the whole Mars retrograde, we'll talk about this kind of a thing. Cause it's about that conserving your energy is that Mars with Saturn and the wise use, cause Saturn is about wisdom, the wise use of your energy and the wise use of your, um, if it's anger, also just trying to make something happen. You know, if there's a, a block, it's like maybe seeing, you know, hmm, is there a way around this? And if there isn't, just sitting back and surrendering it until there is an opening, you know, to move less, less stressfully along. Okay. Um, now the good thing is, as while you know Mars is staying in Aries, the Sun is in Leo, and so the Sun will be working to trine. Mars throughout the month of August. I mean, of course, then the sun goes into um, Virgo, but while the sun's in Leo, I mean, and this is where, where, um, where did I write down? So my glasses are, um, you know, what can I do? Where is my energy? Because the sun and Mars are similar in the sense of um, the personal spark of vitality and things like that they kind of both represent. So where is your energy flowing? You know, what can you do? Even if you're feeling frustrated with work or people in your life or whatever, it's like, what can I do? You know, like I can say, I'm going to do my video and I'm going to post it on my website and I'm going to do this. And just seeing like what you can do. They do a lot of neuroscience around, um, you know, even with depression and stuff, if you have a list and then you're saying, I'm doing these things, it can help create dopamine in the brain to help you feel more joyful and more sense of self-efficacy. So even looking for small things you can accomplish when it looks like different areas are blocked, it's like, you know, what can I do? Um, on that same theme, um, Venus is going to move into Cancer, which is like, wow, because we had the Venus retrograde and Venus was in Gemini for so long. That's finally changing signs. So Venus and Cancer, Venus, of course, the planet of love, and Cancer is about family and close friends and self-nurturing. And then Mercury, which also retrograded in Cancer, now moving into Leo, so we're getting fresh energy from those two guys. Um, Mercury's our thinking, and Leo is gratitude, can be one of the great things for that. So um, this fresh energy of Venus and Cancer, Mercury and Leo, as also the sun's in Leo, um, and that would mean also Mercury trining, Mercury making a good angle to Mars, just like the sun is, because they're both in Leo. Working with gratitude. Um, seeing what does work. You know, I have a friend that has so many challenges in her life, and then I talk to her on the phone, and sometimes she'll say, hmm, let's see, what else is going right? And she'll move her mind to the positive to tell me, after she's told me some challenges, like what are the things that are moving along, you know? And that could be a real sense of you do have personal power, you are making changes. One of the other things to watch out for with the, the Mars slowing down is especially when it gets to that point where it's squaring Saturn, is being really critical of goals that you have. Like, you know, I'm not, you know, moving forward enough on a big goal. Instead of seeing, like, small victories you have and cheering yourself on or um, just trying to see, be sweet to yourself, even if you're not getting to your goals as fast as you think you should or something. So that, and then being around people who do give you a greater perspective on your life and you might get focused on like, I'm a loser because of this. And it's like, me and I have all these other victories and somebody else could say, hey, wait a minute, you have all this going on that's really good. So staying around those kind of supportive people and watching out for being too, um, you know, checking off your deficits. So watching it like these other things are going well. And it's just a timing thing with the Mars. So, and I said Mars is going to be retrograde, you know, it's only retrograde really from the middle of September to the middle of November, but then it sort of catches up with itself. So there's this whole period of the retrograde, but it's in Aries for that whole time because it's kind of retrograding through most of its own sign. So it's not like, oh, this whole terrible time of Mars retrograde. It's Mars and Aries. So it's like, where are the different 
sources of power. And I will say something else about this upcoming Mars retrograde, I'll probably repeat next month, but it's about hidden power. Like when Mercury goes retrograde and you have this hidden wisdom and you go within and you see Mercury, the inner communication and the inner wisdom. When Mars has, you know, a greater sense of power, um, viewing power differently than you normally would. Um, so we can talk about that next month, but it's not a terrible thing to have the Mars retrograde. But I think what's terrible is the self-attack that can come with it. Me, you know, I stink and all this stuff. So we got to watch for the positive, having the positive be a strong part of your spiritual practice. Um, and let's see, okay. I think that's most of what I want. Oh, right, Uranus retrograde. Okay. Now, when I talk about Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, those are the outer, outer planets. They have very big orbits, you know. And pretty much they're retrograde half the year. So it's not a big deal when those turn retrograde, as opposed to something like Mercury, Venus, Mars. It's, you know, affects us more in a day-to-day -day kind of a thing. But these outer planets are kind of always, they're either forward, they're direct, half and half the year. So we're getting to the point where Uranus is turning retrograde, and it's going retrograde like the 15th of August. So the whole month is sort of Uranus going slow to turn around. And like that idea of looking inward, Uranus is a planet of like the genius mind and breakthroughs and things like this. So it's a great time for meditation. Um, you're observing dreams, um, kind of um, taking your intuition seriously and um, cult taking time to cultivate the int intuition. So as it's turning around, we can say, oh, for this whole time, Uranus is retrograde. It's more about when those outer planets turn, when they turn retrograde, when they go direct, is more that kind of focusy time. So again, as you're focusing on um, some, you know, these gifts of insights and intuitions and working to connect with greater sources of ideas that can come from within you, um, spiritual, if you see the spiritual as kind of outside of you, angel presence or things like this. Um, so, and even reading about different things like astrology, actually is ruled by Uranus or different metaphysical things. A lot of people have been telling me they've been interested in tarot cards lately, but even if it was like pulling one card and kind of meditating on that and just and trusting your inner wisdom about it rather than kind of scrambling to see what does everyone else say about this. It's, it's kind of like letting the imagery speak to you, could be part of the Uranus turning retrograde. So a little bit shorter today, but um, just wanted to really get in there, that Mars stuff. So be kind to yourself, be gentle, um, see all the strengths that you have, maybe keep a gratitude journal every day and seeing what things are going well in your life and have simple goals that you can see, wow, I'm, I'm doing a whole lot, even though this is, needs to be put aside, I'm doing all this, you know. So um, if you want to get a reading, uh, lunamichaels.com, or you can call me, text me, 248-583-1663. I've got my book on uh, Amazon Kindle, The Spiritual Gifts of the 12 Astrological Signs. And I'm hanging there, and I think it's going to be a fun month. It's, it's kind of peaceful sometimes when that Mars slows down, once you get used to that sort of feeling of pause, you know. So bye-bye uh, for now.